One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Glover. Cindy has the night off. For the first time tonight, we're hearing the 911 call, which led to the arrest of Varnell City Councilman Sheldon Fowler. Fowler was charged with simple assault after an argument with police. Fowler announced he's stepping down from the city council. The police chief was put on administrative leave as well. Channel 3's Denise Cordell tells us what happened before Fowler's arrest and who called 911. Fowler's wife, Stephanie, called 911 after an argument between the two on June 13th. She told dispatch Fowler had taken Ambien while drinking alcohol throughout the day and was harassing the family. My husband is drunk and half naked will not leave my daughters alone. For two minutes, Stephanie Fowler talked to Whitfield County 911 dispatchers from her home on Country Way asking for help. She told them her husband, Sheldon Fowler, who was a Varno City Councilman, was falling over furniture and wouldn't leave their daughter's room. He's been calling her a fat retard, which he is special needs. Okay. He's calling names. Okay. And he just won't go to bed. He's standing here slurring his words. He will not go to bed. I can't do anything with him. Mrs. Fowler told dispatchers there were weapons in the house, but that her husband was unarmed. Do you feel safe with me getting off the phone with you before the officers get there, or do you want me to stay on the phone with you until they get there? I think it'll be okay. Varnell Police Chief Lyle Grant says when his officers arrived, Fowler insulted them and poked them in the chest with his finger. Ten days later, a warrant was issued for his arrest. In a Facebook post, Grant wrote in part, This was all done to ensure we had all facts together as needed and to allow me time to report to my supervisors the information. It's not clear if Grant broke any laws, but city officials say they hope the Georgia Bureau of Investigation will help them determine how to move forward. The law enforcement professionals go behind, look, and fill in the blanks and answer some of these questions. So hopefully that will happen in the next few days and weeks. Fowler will step down on July 3rd. His position on the city council is up for grabs in the November election. In the studio, Tanisha Cordell, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Also new tonight, a woman is recovering the hospital after falling several feet near the Greenway Farms in Hickson. 
Happened in the 4900 block of Gann Store Road shortly after 8 o'clock this evening. Chattanooga firefighters worked quickly to rescue the 20-year-old woman. They say she fell nearly 30 feet and landed on rocky terrain. Fire officials say the woman fell into a quarry. From what we understand, eyewitnesses uh, were actually, they were in, um, in kayaks in the rock quarry in the small, small lake there. And they observed a, uh, a woman fall off a bluff and actually hit the ground. Uh, they went over immediately to, uh, to try to assist her. Uh, she appeared to be uh, pretty seriously injured, so they called 911. You heard him say there she was critically injured, but she is said to be in stable condition. The cause of her fall is not known tonight. Count on Channel 3 to keep you updated on this story at WRCBTV.com. An inmate was killed and a deputy was critically injured following a shooting on the Vanderbilt campus in Nashville today. Metro police say Robertson County deputies Josh Wiley and Tamisha Jones were transporting inmate Rodney Cole to the Vanderbilt outpatient clinic at Hundred Oaks. At one point, Cole asked to go to the restroom and Wiley escorted him there. Cole somehow obtained a screwdriver, began stabbing Wiley. Jones opened fire, killing the inmate. Wiley was taken to a hospital and was listed in critical condition at last check. The other deputy involved was not injured. A Chattanooga man has agreed to spend 23 years in federal prison after he was arrested for selling a batch of heroin that killed a drug court graduate. According to our partners at the Times Free Press, the trial for 28-year-old Darius Blakemore started yesterday and was expected to last until next week. The heroin was sold to Logan Whitaker in February of last year. Red Bank police found Whitaker dead in his home the next day. Blakemore was arrested two months after that. The judge will now decide whether to accept Blakemore's plea agreement during a sentencing hearing on October 23rd. Two others involved already pleaded guilty in exchange for their testimony. They're scheduled to be sentenced next month. In Crime Stoppers, a gruesome discovery in a cemetery last week led to a long and tedious search for clues, but the crime remains unsolved. Two victims were found in Highland Memorial Gardens off Highway 153. 20-year-old Thomas Holder and 17-year-old Rayshawn Underwood, they'd been shot. Help has been coming in from the community, but investigators are still looking for important pieces of the puzzle. Helpful bits of information you can provide may not even be related to the murders. Part of our investigation is to determine exactly what the victim was doing immediately prior to their death and as far away as 24 to 48 hours and even weeks prior to their death. So if you have any information, if you saw the victim or victim, it could be that you know the victim was into an altercation prior. It could be that someone was mad at them. Any little thing that you know about the victim or the potential suspect, provide that information. Up to $1,000 reward is on the table. Were you out late last Monday night into Tuesday morning? Call Crime Stoppers and describe any suspicious vehicles you may have seen in the area of the cemetery. The number 698-3333. You could earn some cash, deliver a family and community some justice, and we'll never ask who you are. A man who was shot on O'Neill Street two weeks ago has died. This shooting was the center of our Crime Stoppers report last week. Police believe that the person was targeted in the shooting and happened two weeks ago. The alleged gunman ran from Chattanooga officers, U.S. Marshals and K-9 units and got away. Investigators have been able to collect some suspect information. They need more, though. They ask anyone with information regarding this incident to call the number that you see there on your screen. The Walker County Sheriff's Office is looking for Anastasia Lee Fowler, told the 16-year-olds a runaway from a foster home in Rossville, Georgia. She's also in legal custody of the Georgia State Department of Family and Children's Services. If you know where she is, call the Walker County Sheriff's Office. Today, three new police officers joined the Dalton, Georgia Police Force. Caleb Renegar, Justin Smith, and Corey Green were sworn in at the ceremony at the Police Services Center in Dalton. All three graduated from the Regional Police Academy in Cherokee County last week. They'll continue their training in the department's field training officer program. The heat's back. Summer is here for sure. Paul Barris of the Storm Alert Center to give us a little peek at what's going on for the rest of the week. Paul. If you notice, you've been outside, you notice the humidity levels are starting to go up. Dew point temperature right now is about 61 and the temperature is near 80. So uh, that humidity going up, temperatures uh, not dropping that far. Boy, big cluster of storms is moving across the Midwest right now. 
uh, tornadoes on the ground and uh, a lot of tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings. Hail the size of golf balls to baseball size hail out in the Great Plains over the cornfields of Iowa. And a little cluster of storms are developing in the Gulf that's going to come swinging our way and bring us some rain later on. As a matter of fact, we'll look at Vipercast. Right now, we'll see the clouds increasing through tomorrow. This is around noon tomorrow, southeasterly winds and plenty of clouds. Just a chance for some widely scattered showers. Best chance is going to be, it looks like, west and east of us, but still a chance in the valley too. Now by Friday at 7 o'clock, even a better chance for showers and storms as that little swirl that's in the Gulf of Mexico moves our way and by Friday afternoon it could be out of here. Then we get into Saturday morning, could see some more scattered showers develop too by about 8 o'clock. Right now we're thinking this is how much rain could fall in about the next 48 to 60 hours from now. So thinking about an inch to an inch and a half, at least according to our computer model here, I think a better chance of about a half inch to an inch across the area. I've got the complete seven day coming up. We'll take a look at the rest of the weekend too. Paul, thanks. We'll check back in with you shortly. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 11, a dorm room explosion at a Kentucky campus sends a school employee to the hospital. We'll have this story much more when we get back. The man charged with stabbing a police officer at the Flint, Michigan airport will stay behind bars until his trial. Amor Fatui, who lives in Montreal, Canada, was denied bail in court today. He wore a medical mask during the hearing and was heard mumbling God is great in Arabic as the proceedings began. He's accused of saying that same phrase on June 21st before stabbing an airport police officer in the neck. The next court date in the case is set for July 5th. One person was injured in a gas explosion on a Kentucky college campus today. It happened at a dorm at Murray State. Officials say one person was taken to the hospital. They're expected to be okay. That injured person was a school employee. Officials believe a gas leak was the cause of this explosion. People in a suburb of Tokyo had a surprise today when firefighting foam exploded out of a store. A car apparently hit a fire extinguisher in the third floor parking lot of the store. Foam flowed onto the busy plaza in front of the shop. You see the result there. Two fire trucks were called in to try to wash it all away. No injuries were reported. Police in St. Petersburg are trying to get to the bottom of some graffiti that's popped up around the downtown area there in Florida. The drawings look like fannies, derriers, whatever you want to call them. We all have one. Well, now St. Petersburg has many dozens of the drawings have popped up around the city since spring, but Police are continuing to search for the one responsible. Until then, this keister caper remains a mystery. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 11, we'll look at what's at stake for Ray County and the taxpayers there if city officials did not take steps 
to fix the overcrowding problem in the Ray County Jail. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. One million dollars, that's how much it's going to cost Ray County taxpayers if the Sheriff's Department does not fix an overcrowding problem at the jail. State officials sent a letter to the Ray County Sheriff saying he must fix the issue within 60 days or he'll be taken to court. The sheriff says overcrowding has been a problem since he took office in 2002, but he blames county commissioners for not doing their job. Tonight, Channel 3's Kate Smith takes a look inside the jail and investigates the issue. Inside the Ray County Jail, there are 217 inmates, but only 87 beds, forcing 130 to sleep on the floor. Past these prison doors, inmates are packed in here like sardines. The Ray County Jail is facing a serious overcrowding issue. Inmates are forced to sleep wherever they can find room. One time we had 25 people in there and it's made for eight people. Sheriff Michael Neal has 30 days to cut the population in half and then 30 more days to ensure the jail built for 87 inmates is only housing 87 inmates. To get the numbers that low is probably not possible. That requires moving inmates to county jails across Tennessee and paying those counties to house the inmates Ray County taxpayers will foot the bill. Just the housing for those inmates is going to be a million dollars a year. Um, not including moving the inmates from one facility to the other, bringing them back to Dayton for court, um, and the aspect of transportation is going to be tremendous also. Sheriff Neal says the county is in desperate need of a new justice center, but county commissioners have not funded a new jail. Everything's not working together, and they have been told for years now that this day's coming, that they're going to have to move these inmates to other facilities. The state of Tennessee's been telling them, the fire marshal's been telling them, and the days came, and they didn't get a facility built. County commissioners tell Channel 3 they are looking at a few different locations to build the new jail that they do not yet have the money for. Until that happens, inmates are tend to a cell. I know I deserve to be here and talk, go to court. I'm not saying I don't deserve to be here, but at least put us somewhere to where we're not walked on. The sheriff is working with the DA's office to release nonviolent offenders or give them less time here in jail. Once we get more information about this process, we'll be sure to pass it along. Reporting in Ray County, Kate Smith, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. 
Since 2011, Sheriff Neal has, says he's been setting aside money uh, to pr try to prevent taxpayers from paying for the jail. He says he's saved more than $600,000 for a new justice center. He, along with the state comptroller's office, have discussed housing 75 state inmates at the new jail to collect money for operating costs. State would pay the county $40 per inmate each day to house the inmates at the Ray County Jail. We've all heard don't look directly at the sun, but on August 21st, millions will be gazing at the sky as the moon passes in front of our star. Local optometrists say it's like a laser being pointed at your eye, not in a good way. They suggest doing research before selecting glasses for the solar eclipse online. They emphasize polarized lenses will not work. Welding shades will not work. When buying glasses, make sure there are no burns. This would look like a tiny hole. Even the smallest speck of light poking through can damage your retina. For more information on where to buy these glasses, check out our special solar eclipse section at WRCBTV.com. Fourth of July is just a few days away. If you're staying in the Tennessee Valley, start planning to watch fireworks now. There are plenty of shows to celebrate Independence Day. Since July 4th falls on a Tuesday this year, displays will begin as early as this week, like the show Friday night in the Lafayette Municipal Park at 10 p.m. We have a list of all the fireworks shows in the Tennessee Valley we know of at WRCBTV.com. Paul Bears to the Storm Alert Center. I uh, saw some posts online tonight that people have already begun shooting fireworks, Paul. Just want to be out playing in the evening, I think. Greg, they do that at Christmas time around here. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any difference what time of the year it is. Fireworks are all year long. All right, more humidity coming up for tomorrow. You already noticed it a little bit outside. Uh, showers will develop for tomorrow. They'll be scattered, then some showers and thunderstorms coming up on Friday. A lot of the rain south of us has dissipated. Uh, the really big stuff is up across northern Missouri coming out of Iowa. Still tornado warnings, tornado watches in effect. The Chicago area is getting hit hard. Milwaukee's getting hit real hard with heavy rain, but the real severe weather right now, and up to 26 tornadoes have already touched down right along the Mississippi River. So it's been a nasty night up there. 78 currently in the city, 73 Cleveland and Dalton, 68 already in Dayton, so it's 10 degrees cooler than it is in Chattanooga right now. Altamont's around 69, 70 in Athens, and Murphy's down to 63 already with Fort Payne at 68. 88 and 58 the high and the low for it today. That's a pretty good spread, 30 degrees. This time of year, that does not happen very often. That was very dry air last night and very comfortable, too. Uh, from the Sky Watchers, we had 87 in Dalton. Chatsworth was 90. 85 in Lafayette, 88 in Tryon. I think it's going to be a little bit cooler for tomorrow because we're going to see more clouds. 87 in Eastridge, 85 from Saudi Days in Lakeside, but nearly 90 out in Cleveland, 89. And 85 in Ringo with Signal Mountain, 79. Lookout Mountain, 81. Dunlap was 86. Pikeville, 88. Dayton was 84, and even Spring City got up to 89. 88 in Athens, 89 in Delano, and then we had 85 in Murphy, Jasper at about 87. Now for tomorrow morning, we don't expect any rain. But by afternoon, some scattered showers will develop. This little wave down in Louisiana is going to start moving to the north and east. That's going to pull up the moisture. It's going to increase the chance for rain. It's a little swirl in the upper atmosphere. The cold front's still out to the west. And then we're going to see some of these showers come in, especially uh, it through Friday into Thursday night and probably into Friday morning at least. By Friday afternoon they start to taper off and then into Friday night pretty much out of here. But Saturday another round of showers and storms moves in. This is around 7 o'clock Saturday afternoon. And into Sunday if this front stalls, and I think it will, we'll see more rain come in. Now Vipercast is very aggressive on this. It's saying uh, 1 to 3 inches of rain possible. I think a couple inches of rain on outside chance, mainly about uh, three quarters of an inch to about an inch, I think, on average. But tonight, 69, it's going to be warmer uh, than last night. 84 tomorrow with more clouds and a few showers move in. Nothing really heavy, though. Tomorrow night, showers and a few thunderstorms with a light southerly wind. And a real good chance for showers and storms off and on through Friday, Saturday. Should be ending on Sunday. And it uh, looks like Monday will be dry with 89. Now, Tuesday is the 4th of July. Right now, it looks dry to me with 90 for the high and a slight chance for a shower next Wednesday. But next few days, next 72 hours, we'll probably see occasional showers and thunderstorms popping up. So you may have to do some dodging out there. Uh, we're used to that. Paul, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Coming up next in sports, one former mock is off to the NBA. Plus, Tim Tebow doing Tim Tebow things. A big night for Tebow in his first game in action since the promotion. Sports is next.
UTC's Trey McLean wore his heart on his sleeve, but it wasn't just heart with McLean. It was equal parts talent. And that's part of the reason Trey is now NBA bound. Former two time all conference player will play for the Phoenix Suns summer league squad in Las Vegas. As a senior, he averaged nearly 13 points a game. Now the former transfers breakout season was his junior year where he led the team in points, rebounds and steals per game. Can you believe it's been exactly one year since legendary Lady Vols head coach Pat Summit's death? As we as was echoed numerous times at her celebration of life gone but not forgotten. 365 days later, it remains true. Fans turned up outside her statue all day paying respect. The eight time national champion head coach had players of past and present chiming in from across the world. Former UConn star Diana Taurasi said UConn would not be a dynasty if not for what Summit did at Tennessee. All while right down the street, her legacy lives on in a different form. The Pat Summit Clinic continues to raise money and care for those battling Alzheimer's. After four ties in five games, Chattanooga FC went on a goal scoring rampage, netting 12 goals in three games. They needed that offense to carry over tonight against Memphis City. Four games left, including tonight's, and the playoffs still are not a sure thing. CFC with a big chance here. Felipe Antonio one on one with a goalie. The keeper, though, wins that match. But seconds later, Antonio gets the last laugh. It's a great feed from John Finley, the one timer. One nothing CFC. 13 minutes before the half, it's the equalizer. Somehow, Shota Nishi beats two defenders and the keeper, Paulo Pita. And that ties it at one. Memphis would add a late goal to win it. Two, not, two to one, rather. CFC now facing a must win at Nashville on Saturday. So the New York Mets promoted Tim Tebow to high A rookie ball. He made his debut today. Now let's think, what's the most Tim Tebow thing he could do after a promotion? You guessed it, hit a home run in his debut. He singled in his first at bat and then went yard in his fourth at bat. Tim Tebow, everyone, a dinger in a debut. St. Lucie, Florida, high A rookie ball. Let's keep that home run theme going. The Chattanooga Lookouts were digging the home runs tonight with Mississippi on the road. John Rodriguez homer twice for Chattanooga, once in the third to left center and once in the fourth to right center. The Lookouts run away with it 5-1 to one over the M Braves to open the series. We move now to the big league diamond. The Atlanta Braves have been hot. Coming into tonight's showdown with San Diego, they won 9 of 12. It's a late start when they play these West Coast games. Right now, they trail the Padres 4 to nothing in the fourth inning. But yeah, entering the night, the Atlanta Braves were 37 and 39, just two games below 500. That is hard to imagine at this point. At some point, they had to find a streak, right? And it's early out west, so yeah. they've had plenty of time. Exactly. They've won 9 of 12. They lose this one. They can still salvage this series tomorrow. Confidence. Mm -hmm. Bravos. Good deal. Paul Bears has your seven day when we get back.
Well, for tomorrow, we're going to slowly see the clouds increase. Uh, temperature is going to be a little bit more muggy in the morning with 70. But into the afternoon, a low to mid 80s. And by afternoon, some scattered showers could develop. Best chance will be after dark, though. And about 84 for that high on Thursday and 82 on Friday. And on Saturday, another round of showers and storms likely. Sunday should uh, be all right for most of us. And by the 4th of July, which is Tuesday, should be about 90 and crackling hot. Just keep those tornadoes out on the Mississippi yeah, away from yeah, us, yeah, right? Yeah, I don't see any tornadoes yeah, now. Good. Thank you, yeah. Paul. Today, a man was arrested for DUI after he crashed a U-Haul into a Philadelphia brewery. It was all caught on camera. Mm -hmm. Let's roll that video. Have a look. Watch a woman jump out of the way Ooh. just in time to avoid wow. being hit. Police say the 41-year-old man was driving down the wrong side of the road, lost control of his U-Haul, and smashed into the brewery. He received treatment for a minor leg injury. Amazingly, no one else was hurt. And that's either not a very popular joint or at a time of day when, thankfully, more patrons weren't there. Right? Thankfully, no one was hurt, but yeah. He'd be better off crashing into a water pub than a... If you got a DUI, is that what I heard? That's it, exactly. Yeah. The irony there. I guess he the needed irony. a beer real bad. Oh, he, he won't get one for a while now, I'm sure. <laughs> we can watch it over and over. It's high-def television <laughs> at its best here. That's a good security News camera. It really it is. is. It really By the way, the, the little thing with the uh, music that showed you all the fireworks destinations around the Tennessee Valley, our very own John Collins put that together. He works hard on all that sure video does. stuff. So go check out one of those demonstrations just to show John Collins you care. Right? Mayor right. Collins. Mayor it's Collins. That's right. We'll see you. <laughs>